Why did the state ask for the death penalty? Join me as we explore the compelling reasons uh, behind the state's request for this action in accordance to Idaho state law. One of the crucial aspects of this case is the involvement of Ann Taylor. Uh, her early selection for this case highlights her expertise and the reason uh, she was chosen to represent Brian Koberger. Ann Taylor is one of the 13 public defenders licensed and qualified to handle a death penalty case in the state of Idaho. Another significant impact is the allocation of funds for both sides now that death penalty is on the table. Capital punishment cases tend to be more expensive due to the additional resources uh, required such as the expert witnesses that they're going to have to bring in, the investigators, uh, and extended trial proceedings. The state and the defense will have different budgets allotted to them as well. Uh, the jury selection becomes vastly different in a death penalty case. The jury must be death qualified. What does that mean exactly? Meaning they are willing to consider and potentially award the death penalty if the state can prove its case and uh, demonstrate that it has merit. Uh, this process ensues that the jury is composed of individuals who can fairly and impartially make this crucial decision. The impact of the death penalty case extends the trial's duration as well. With higher stakes involved, there may be additional legal procedures and hearings, such as many trials uh, within the trial to determine whether the death penalty should be imposed at all. Uh, these factors can prolong the overall duration of the trial. Appeals in a death penalty case also differ significantly. Idaho requires the state to provide notice and its intent to seek the death penalty no less than 60 days after its entry plea, which of course they in this case have done within about 30 days, well within their within their time frame. Uh, this requirement allows ample time for both parties involved to prepare for the unique challenges presented by the capital punishment case uh, that we're now looking at now with Brian Koberger. Now let's also address the question, why did the state ask for the death penalty? The state has selected specific statutory aggravating circumstances listed in the Idaho law. Now, these circumstances include at the time of the murder was committed, the defendant also committed another murder. The murder was especially heinous, atrocious, or cruel, manifesting exceptional depravity. By murder or circumstances surrounding its commission, the defendant exhibited utter disregard for human life. The murder was committed in the preparation of or attempt to perpetrate arson, rape, robbery, burglary, kidnapping, or mayhem, and the defendant killed intending or a killing or acted with reckless indifference to human life. The defendant, by his conduct, exhibited a propensity to commit murder, which will probably constitute a continuing threat to society. It's important to note that any of these aggravating circumstances must be found unanimously by the jury to proceed with the death penalty. That's very important here. Furthermore, the state retains the right to amend or withdraw its notice at any time prior to the trial upon a showing of good cause. Flexibility allows for the possibility of a plea negotiations or the presentation of mitigating circumstances by the defense that may lead to a different outcome. In their notice, the state explicitly mentions, now this is in there and this is interesting to look at, their ability to withdraw from pursuing the death penalty. While it is already established in the law, this serves as a reminder that they have the option to explore alternative resolutions such as a guilty plea where the death penalty would be taken off the table. It's worth also noting that this speculation is based on the language used in the state's notice and the potential motivations behind it. As this case continues to unfold, it's essential to follow reliable sources for accurate updates and analysis. Yeah, so as this thing continues to unfold, it seems like the state is leaving an out for the defense and for Brian Koberger. We'll see how this plays out. You know, Brian Koberger, of course, continuing to stand by that he did not do this, that he is not guilty. He was standing silent even. He didn't even enter a plea. So it's going to be interesting how this unfolds and, and will it go all the way to trial and meeting a jury of his peers who end up voting unanimously to send him to the death penalty or to set this man free. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, please subscribe, like, share this video out. That really helps us out here at Publicly Buzz. And uh, yeah, see you on the next one.